what you're all about, you're always trying to prove yourself. And um, it's the funnest part of where I'm at in my career now is I just don't give a damn. I, I race my heart out. I race as hard as I can. I give it all I have. When I leave the racetrack, I leave the racetrack. And um, aside from working with my team during the week, I just kind of turn off racing uh, until the next weekend comes around. Does the Martin Truex today want to kick the ass of the young Truex one? Why did you worry about that? I mean, he gave me a lot of gray hair, so <laughs> that certainly didn't help, I'm sure. Just the worries that we have as younger people versus where we are now. Yeah, I mean, you know, things change. You know, you, you learn a lot. Experience is, is worth a lot. And, um, you know, this is a tough sport. It's really, really difficult. Um, it, it, I feel like it's gotten harder every year. There's more things that measure what you're doing these yeah. days. Um, you know, those young guys have it tough. Um, I don't want to go back and do that again. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Last year, unfortunately, you had the rough stretch of the playoffs, but you did finish it pretty strong. You were one of the best cars at Phoenix. How important was it, were those last couple of races where you won the pole, ran up front in terms of moving on from the kind of disappointing end after the regular season? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know if it was a huge deal, but I think, you know, um, just for us, just enjoying finishing the year on a high trip, you know what I mean? Realizing that, um, you know, we didn't lose it. It wasn't like it just completely disappeared. Things just didn't go the way we needed them to. We made some mistakes here and there, but um, I know we, we still have what it takes to do what we did in the regular season. And, you know, our goal is to start this year that way and um, and make it to the playoffs again and then, and then you know, do what we can, do what we know how to do and, um, and go further than we did last year. And then the Daytona 500s, Argue, it, it, well, not argue, but it is the biggest box that you haven't checked off yet. Would you be at peace if that was something you weren't able to do? I really haven't thought much about it. I think so. I mean, I think there's been a lot of great drivers that have never won it. But, you know, as we sit here, I can't I can't really imagine not getting it done. So uh, looking forward to the opportunity. And with that opportunity, um, with Legacy now, you guys will have um, potentially eight or nine cars in the race instead of six for Toyota. How does that change pit strategy, working together, um, you know, on the on the racetrack and drafting? Does that make it easier, or does it make it more difficult given that there's more teams you have to coordinate with? Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's definitely an advantage. You know, it's um, you know strength in numbers. You know, I think that's something that's hurt us uh, on speedway racing the last couple of years is just you know being the, the lowest car count of all the manufacturers. So. Uh, certainly gives you know Toyota better odds of winning another 500, and uh, you know for us, I think just uh, having more help out there, having more friends to, that you know you can lean on, um, you know should should help our chances. We'll see. Thank you. This is Blaine Perkins, driver of the number nine Raceline Wheels CR7 Motorsports Chevy. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Also check out one of those two videos beside me. Visit FrontStretch.com for more racing content.